Here we go. We're live already. Hey. That looks too tight. Yeah. All right. Hey, guys. Uh, welcome to episode. <laughs> this is the big production yeah. uh, budget that we have. No, I love that, though. It's uh, so chill. we have uh, episode 211. Happy Wednesday. We are with Joshua Vickery. I'm so excited to have him on with CFC Arts. Um, let us know you can hear us or see us. Give us a thumbs up. Hey, Jocelyn, give us a heart. Give us something. Oh, there's a thumbs up. So they can hear us and see us, which is always good. Bob Moylan's on. And I'll try to keep track of that. You don't have to worry about it. Um, and if somebody has a comment, I'll make sure you know about okay, it. So sweet. welcome to the show. Oh, it's so good to I'm be so here. I'm so excited to have you. Like, I, I was joking earlier with the Up Live family that it, Joshua has a busier schedule than I have. But your, your people, Aaron especially, your people are incredibly uh, patient. And we had to go back and forth a whole bunch of times. But I'm so excited to have you on here because I think what you do in our community is just absolutely amazing. So well, welcome. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I'm sorry it took us so long to get, make this happen. And we went back and forth and back and forth. We did. And I've been watching the show like, I want to be on that. That's I so fun. I love the fact that you want to be on it. I'm excited to have you. And even though you're feeling some pain, what's happening? Yes. You posted oh, that on social media. Goodness. So I figured it was fine to share because, you know, these... These people like to see pain. They have, look, see, here's here's the thing. Don't give me a hard time like you did earlier. Yep. There's cherry blossoms they are or something cherry blossoms. on there. Now, that's not too conservative. I know, right? How can this be conservative? Not at all. Well, no. yes, I'm going through kidney stones, so that's real fun. I've actually had them twice before. And, so painful. But this time it's a little bit, I don't know how you can say kidney stones are better, but this time the kidney stone is very large, but it's not moving. It's staying in the kidney, so they're actually going to be able to blast it with like a sonic boom or something. So do you get, dude, is this the one where you get in the pool or do you go no. underneath? Oh, I would love to get in the pool. There's that like a pool fun. where you can That's blast That's like a mini it. vacation, but no. <laughs> no, they actually were telling me that they're going to lay me on this table. They put me to sleep. They're going to lay me on this table and then they're going to take a sonic boom wave times like 3,000 or something nice. crazy like that and pinpoint laser it right into the kidney stone and then blast the heck out of it. Nice. You know what it's I crazy. forgot to tell you? Yeah. So if you're a table talker, which you might be, yeah. it's all right. Um, oh, every time, hands. every time you do that, it shakes the table. Oh. I forgot to tell you, but this is this is why I need a, an executive producer. I'll just put my hands on the coffee cup, and then I'll be completely <laughs> fine. Hey, Chad! You can I up? love Chad, so I want to have Chad's son on. We've been, <gasps> yes. we've been communicating. Uh, we just have to do it where it's, it's in an evening. So that he's he a super duper runner. I'm, yes, it's amazing. Oh, Gert Garman says oh, hi. Hi, Gert. I love her. I just met with her all day yesterday. We're launching some kind of cool stuff, and I'll, oh, I'll let you in on that later. I'm kind of jealous. I always wanted to work with Gert. Oh, but... see, everybody wants to work with Gert and I have known each other since we we both started as prodigies at six at UCF, so we've known each other like 35 years. Uh, I met Gert through Jim Bowden, who we were talking we about. We love earlier. Jim Bowden. Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. All right, so tell us a little bit about you. Give us your background. I got your bio, obviously, but you know, give us your beginnings, sure. kind of how you got to where you're at before we jump into CFCR. Yeah, so I am actually grew up in Virginia. Um, I love the seasons and miss it very much here in Orlando, Florida. There are no Florida. seasons here. There are no hot, seasons hot, hotter and hotter. Yes, but um, I grew up in Virginia, and uh, my dad was a pastor. So we lived there until I was in uh, to a teenager. Oh, hi, Barbara. Um, hi, and, Barbara. And I uh, moved to Vera Beach, Florida, and went and went to high school there. I went to college at Palm, Palm Beach Atlantic University in West Palm Beach. I traveled and sang on the road for a couple of years. You oh, hold on, you traveled. Is that in your bio? No. You traveled and sang. Was yeah. that your was your major music? Yeah, my major was church music. No way. Uh -huh. And so then I traveled with a group and sang, lived on a bus and traveled the country. It was amazing, but I could only handle like a year and a half of it because <laughs> that's a pretty crazy life that's, to be honest. Well, on a bus. Yeah, it was actually. Here's a fun story. So it was a Christian singing group. The bus had belonged to New Song, which is a big Christian group. Yeah, before sure. that, it was MC Hammer's bus. No way. So I was a little bit scared. Hammer the first time. <laughs> the first time I was like, well, I'd be I afraid of what's going to pop out of that bus. <laughs> I'm like, I need some Lysol wipes or something before I make this my you home. You totally need Lysol wipes. Yeah, so, but it was cool. It was it was all metallic and shiny and nice. black. And, Can't yeah, touch this. Nice. Yeah. That's why. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I did not know you were a singer. That's yeah. so awesome. Do you still sing at church are you uh, i do i okay. still sing well i sing when i can and whenever the organization can talk me into doing like we've had some karaoke fundraisers and stuff so nice. i sing like just for fun now but. i like to sing for fun we do a show on mondays called Man manic monday and of course everything's 80s which is long before you were born but we love 80s music and so i would love to sing all the time on uh, he says he uh, chad says you're a, you're an amazing oh, singer oh chad I have i'll no, pay you later no <laughs> <laughs> all right so how did you transition from 
uh, being a Christian singer, being on the bus, doing the whole tour yeah. scenario, and then what was next? So then I moved to Orlando in 2003 to take my first church music job, and I was uh, at two churches locally, and then in 2010, I uh, started at Disney as a casting director for Disney Entertainment. Is that how you met Jim? That No, I did not meet Jim that way. I actually met Jim because he was a United Arts grant panelist for nice. us. Um, so, But I met lots of amazing Disney people who are still involved with our organization today and part of our story for sure. But I started there and um, really was, was hosting auditions from people all over the world and noticing that Orlando was really a mecca for talent. It really is. It's like, you know, film in LA or musical theater in New York City, here with our theme park and convention industry, there's so many talented people That's here. amazing. So I would ask people, you know, you know, if you were a singer, Ted, I would say, and you are a singer, and if you were I a am, singer. I am, actually. Since you are a singer, I would ask you. In my you. own mind. <laughs> Not like the bad American Idol auditions, I'm oh, better than that. Oh, you're better, okay. <laughs> so I would say, hey, where do you sing back home, right? Like, where do you, where do you have community, and, and where do you get to perform? And nine times out of ten, people would say they did not have a place to belong unless they were maybe involved in their church music program. So it really birthed in me this idea or in, in this passion to make sure that in Central Florida that every person that loved to sing at the time would have that opportunity. And that's how the community choir began in 2010. So uh, real quick, Tyler wanted to know if you know Sammy and, I don't know what he said. T Tyler, repeat it so I can ask him, sorry. Lots of comments going back and forth. Sammy. Sammy and somebody. I know lots Tyler, of Sammys. Tyler, Sammy Tyler Brazel. <laughs> you know Tyler? Tyler Brazel? I don't think so. Tyler, um, gosh, he's just chef extraordinary. He's been on the show. Mm. Um, helped open pharmacy out in Dr. Phillips, uh, part of that whole crowd. So oh, we'll cool. see what he's asking. Um, all right, so you, but the talk about the choir because I don't know about the choir. I yeah. should. We always joke. Um, Sammy and Shannon is what Tyler's asking. Sammy, I know lots of Sammy and Shannon. You'll have to be more specific. Oh. Pavlov, yes, I love Sammy Pavlov. Oh, there Do you, you go. Know Sammy Pavlov. He must know Sammy Pavlov. Sammy's amazing. Great performer. Uh, great leader at Disney. Wonderful, wonderful person. Maybe Shannon Lynn. Shannon Lynn, maybe. You know, know what some of my favorite oh, music... Oh, Sammy and Shannon, they're married. Oh, there you go. Yes. Pop See, lock. some of my mu my favorite musical talent out at Disney is in Epcot in the Americas. Where yeah, they Voice sing. of Liberty. Oh my gosh, they're absolutely amazing. We actually have a Voice of Liberty lady that comes here and performs at the Citrus Club oh, nice. uh, once a month. And she is so talented. Wait, sorry, nothing at Citrus Club. Way too talented for the Citrus Club. We need to find her a different gig. <laughs> Who is that? Um, I wish I knew her name. Is it Jazz? It may be, but Katrina she, was, Mena she Rick? was so good. I think it's Katrina. She's so good. And of course, you feel like you're in the lounge there because that's actually where you are. So um, <laughs> it's definitely not that beautiful rotunda where all that music and that powerful music comes in and you feel motivated and then you go out and get a drink wherever <laughs> you can find one at Epcot. Uh, so talk about the choir. So I don't know about the choir. Yeah, so the choir actually is how this whole journey of this organization began. So we started the choir in 2000, September of 2010. Um, it was very much a grassroots effort. So the first meeting happened in my garage. I brought together a bunch of show directors, performers, um, business people, and said, is this something that we need to start here in Central Florida? And, at the, and when we started, it was a for-profit for passion project. Um, had no desire to run or lead a nonprofit. And so we created this, um, out of a garage and then we had these grassroots meetings in people's homes so Ted if I knew you then I would say hey would you host a meeting in your house and invite every singer you've ever known and nice. we'll come in and do a, a you know, presentation on the choir and we did that in 32 homes over four months um, wow. it was like worse than Mary Kay or Tupperware like we, <laughs> like we were selling the choir uh, and we had people like sign it. up right there on the spot it was awesome but we launched the choir in February of 2011 um, and we thought, you know, if we have 50 singers show up and pay the membership due, nice. we'll put on some concerts, we'll serve our community. And we had 152 singers show up to the very first rehearsal. Wow. Yeah, we had music packets for 75. Our room wasn't big enough. Um, That's amazing. Yeah, pretty incredible. Because of the talent, too. But you guys basically went out and did kind of a road show um, to get people involved. We you did. got them... I love the grassroots. That's one of the things I love about Orlando is that we, you can be grassroots here and you can still make such an impact. Yeah. Totally. So what happened? Did you, you had the 150 plus come audition and then what transpires after that? You form a choir and this a choir. I, I mean, I don't, I don't read. 
So um, your bio is beautiful, but I want you to educate them. Okay. So well, to fast forward, we now it's yeah we have a 310 voice community choir now. Um, Chorus America says we're the largest choir in the entire community choir in the entire country, which is really awesome, and we should be bragging about that here totally. in Orlando. Um, but we started out really with the, the idea of, of being able to, you know, our vision slogan is connect, serve, and perform. And we really wanted people to find community, to find belonging, to have relationships. Um, oh, hugs to you too, Karen. I love Karen Khan. I oh. miss you. We miss, I miss you. You've got to come back up to the club. That's have where you met, I met Henry? Her. Yeah, uh, no, Her I've man? not met Henry yet. Henry's I just see the awesome. pictures. Karen, see, Joshua says you have to come up to the club, have a drink. <laughs> We've got to meet Henry. But she's an amazing woman. She really is. Amazing. And a great singer. And a great singer. Props to you, Karen. Props to you. Uh, so we, um, I forgot, Karen got me distracted. What was I talking about? You were just talking about how you did the first show. Oh, yes. So we had, um, we Man, that was good. connecting, serving by giving back to the, to the community through our gifts and talents and abilities. And so we do that by partnering with other local nonprofits and charities and to bring the arts at no cost. So fundraising galas, special events, 5K walks, volunteer recognitions, our artists donate their time. And that was a part of the very beginning. That's the amazing. first thing we ever did was we flash mobbed uh, the Canine Companions fundraiser at the Millennium Mall nice. uh, at Neiman Marcus. It was the first thing. That was when flash mobs were really cool, Ted. Like, Are they not cool anymore? Not really. <laughs> I mean, people still want us to do them, we do them. But then it went viral thousands and thousands of views because flash mobs were like still hip then but um so yeah so we started the choir we had our first concert in february of 2011 it, uh, sorry may of 2011 and it was a big patriotic concert salute to american heroes and we nice. had um hey joe um and we had um 1100 people buy tickets to that very first wow. concert so we thought okay we have 150 singers 1100 patrons we're definitely onto something. There's definitely a niche here for There's this. There's a need, a, and a niche is a better word, but people obviously had a desire to hear it. There, yeah. It was missing, there was something missing. Yeah, and one of the things that we found as we created more programs, you know, as we created the orchestra and the youth programs and programs for people with disabilities and all the things that we've done now, people were missing that piece of their life, right? Like they did in college, they did in high school, it was their safe place in certain times of their life and they left it because they start a family or they focus on their career, you know, but they were missing that piece of them, the right. arts. Right. And so a lot of it has been kind of a homecoming for a lot of people. I love that. Yeah. All right, so when you engage the community though, I think that's only seven years ago, May, right? May 2011. Yeah. So you have come, you are on like every magazine, most most famous, most best 50. I mean, come on, you are on <laughs> everything. But that is an, that's a huge accomplishment. And I know you're gonna give it to your team too because it takes a village pretty much to do most of the things that we do here. But that is a lot to accomplish in seven years. Mm. So what was, the, what was the driving force? Did you feel like you got, immediately got, not, so you already have support in your industry or within mm. that. Did you get support from the city? Was, uh, was the community embracing of what you were trying to do? Because what you were trying to do, I feel like, was different than yeah. anything else before you. Completely, I mean, we've had 100% support, not only from the city and the county and surrounding cities and counties. We're really saturated in a three county area, but have programs in a four county area. Um, but the community has rallied around us and our beloved arts community has rallied around us because we're very different, you know. We love to partner with professional organizations like the Orlando Ballet, the Orlando Shakespeare Theater, um, the Orlando Philharmonic. You know, we've done all sorts of things with these professional organizations to give community people the opportunity to perform. Um, but we're very different, right? So we, we really are all about arts accessibility. So our mojo is to remove the barriers for our everyday community people of all ages and abilities to be able to experience the arts. So there was nothing like, exactly like us in our city, and according to the National Endowment for the Arts, there's nothing like us in the country right now that's, wow. that's structured exactly like we are. So it really was about um, connecting people to the arts and through that building community. And I think that's what's been our success is that we've been about people and about community, about relationships, and the arts are actually just the vehicle to, to create And I that. feel like Orlando and the surrounding communities were so in inclusive. I, mean, I feel like we have a fantastic uh, a group of people, a multitude of people who are very accepting and want to try new things and want to bring new things in. And we do have a burgeoning, like Dr. Phillips is 
Dr. Phillips Performing Arts Center is one area, but we have so many amazing mm -hmm. people and and organizations that are doing fantastic things in the city. Yeah. Um, and there's only so much that you can do to get it out there. That's why I love bringing people on the show like you because we're you want to expose other people to what you're doing. Yeah. Because people will you could Google the arts and Orlando. And there's going to be a million things that come up. Most of it's going to be the mouse, and um, <laughs> you're going to have all that scenario in there. But we do have an amazing community, I think. We have a t an incredible community and a very creative community. I mean, there's kind of a, a trifecta here in Central Florida. A part of the reason why CFC Arts has been so needed and I think so well accepted is one, like I mentioned, the, the theme park and convention industry. So we have people, um, hi David, we have people flocking here from everywhere right. um, to try to get that next job. But unfortunately, there's only only so many jobs that actually, you know, you, that, that pay a full-time living. So right. you have people who might be waiting tables or working retail, but really still wanting to perform still. So there's that, that market of people. Then there is um, a lot of mega churches that were here in Central Florida that went from large choirs and orchestras to praise teams and praise bands. They kind That's of true. changed up their model. So you have all these displaced church musicians who say, hey, I still can play my trombone, I still love to sing. And then on top of that, and you know this, Ted, we have an incredible school system. The, you know, Orange County Public Schools is one of the best rated school systems. Um, hi, Thomas. Oh, I just adore I love, Thomas. He's so sweet. He's I wonderful. Mean that in a kind, loving way. <laughs> Tom's a fraternity brother of mine, he so is. I adore him and all he's doing with I was on the water. Pioneers. I was on the Waterman Show, too. I know it's not called oh, the Waterman no, Show. It should, but... I like the Waterman Show. <laughs> Purpose Pioneers. That's what they Purpose do. Purpose Pioneers. They're doing so much with that. So he's yeah. another innovator, influencer. He's incredible. And he's just a great, he's an old soul. And I owe him another coffee date. So, Thomas, yeah. thanks for being high. Um, so, the three, so there's the church displaced musicians, there's the theme park and convention industry. But third, we have an incredible, Orange County Public Schools is 100% access. It's one of the best rated school systems for arts in the country. And then- I didn't know that. It, yeah, incredible, it, really amazing. Because you hear all these things about how we're getting rid of the arts, we're getting rid of all of the things that are ex, quote unquote extracurricular in the school system. I didn't know that about Orange County. Orange County is really leading the way when it comes, and that's a, that's a testament to Dr. Jenkins' leadership and our school board, but also Scott Evans, who serves on our board as well, who oversees the arts and culture for Orange County Public Schools. They're just committed to making sure kids have access. But the, one of the ways they do that is they partner with organizations like ours to come in and help in after school programs and to do in school, you know, kind of supplemental program kind of stuff. So creative with that. So the school system, but then we have Valencia and Full Sail and Seminole State and UCF and Rollins that have these incredible art programs and they're churning out wonderful musicians so and talent. artists, so much talent. And, and a lot of those people stay right here in Central Florida and they choose to then do some other career, but they're still artists right? and they still want to use their gifts. So that's kind of like the trifecta of things that, that have really you know, caused us to grow so very quickly. Last year, Ted, we had 2,032 people of all ages and abilities perform on one of our stages. Oh my gosh. Isn't that crazy? That's amazing. Was that for multiple, let's talk about your program. So yep. when you have a program, is it normally in downtown? Do you go all over? And what do the programs look like? Yeah, so they're all over. Um, we produced, last year we produced 36 different shows. Wow. So a pretty robust, we go year round. Um, and we have choir, we have a, a large community adult community choir, we have 160 member adult symphony orchestra, we have about 1200 kids in our programs, we have a youth orchestra, a theater, uh, we have a school of performing arts, we have um, programs for seniors, programs for people with disabilities, tons of community you're so outreach. Calm, uh, <laughs> you're so calm. Is it the coffee? It is the coffee. You're yeah, so hence calm. the reason why I probably have a kidney stone, right, is the coffee that I drink too much of. I understand. But yeah, it, um, but I do have an amazing team, and I know you mentioned this earlier, but I have to give a shout out to our incredible board and our incredible team because one of the things that I, that I find myself now as leader is that I'm really trying to tap into the greatest potential of those around me. And so I have really great leaders and really great artists who are really committing their lives to the programs that they lead. Um, and they're really amazing. You have a, they have a passion for it. 
And so isn't it wonderful that there's an organization like yours, like CFC Arts, where you can, you can, you can express that passion, help other people know their passion? Because I think a lot of people, uh, because they have the talent, but we, they don't have the wherewithal, they don't know where to reach out, they don't know what to do, you guys are really reaching out in the community, and because you're so community involved, so many people are getting to be touched by that. Yeah, we're, uh, totally. And I think one of the things that CFC Arts is, is doing that's really beautiful is that although we put on these mammoth shows, I mean, we'll have 450 performers on, in one show on a, on a stage for like some of our largest shows, and we'll have 6,000 people come see that show. That's, that's pretty incredible. It is. But you know, that's not the most beautiful part of what we do, I think, because the art that happens on stage, of course, is important. That's, you know, that's part of the reason why we exist. But taking the art out into the community to people who normally wouldn't have access, Agreed. right? So at-risk youth or, or marginalized populations, you know, that, that might have some type of disability, that's where you really see arts changing lives, Agreed. rescuing lives, truly. Um, and so I think that's one of the beautiful things about CFC Arts is that we go out and we find pockets of our community that do not have the arts and, and can't touch it, tangibly be right. a part of it. Um, and so we've seen some some incredible testimonies of life change. And how awesome! Again, I have to give credit to our community so Thank much because we much. embrace it. We're, they want to be part of it. They want to. Um, it's so funny. Do you like the people? <laughs> I do like God it. Bless them all. I mean, come on, it's kind of fun. That's awesome. Um, so talk about the next, are there upcoming events that people should know about? Are there things that are going on that people can participate in? Obviously we'll share all of your information later, but are there, is there anything coming up um, since we're coming on the school year? There's up on the school always year. stuff coming up. That's the answer. That's the answer. <laughs> so we go year round, summer, spring, and fall. Um, so no matter where we are in the year, you can join up with us. Um, we're about to launch into all of our fall programs in August and September. So if you are an artist, if you are uh, a dancer, or you want to perform in theater, or you play an instrument, or you sing, we have a place for you that you can come and perform with us. Everything is non-auditioned, so everybody is welcome. Ted, you can totally come sing with us, I dude. could come sing with you? Yeah, so That's a dream. You, you gotta bring Gert and Jim Bowden, though. That's the We would sing <laughs> Journey, right, Gert? It would have to be Don't uh, Stop Believing, I think, awesome. at that point. Hi, Michelle. Oh, I love Michelle Michelle's Palmer. Wonderful. She's wonderful. She really is. Again, we have we have amazing people that all support each other. That's one of the that's one of the things I've discovered in the show in the year almost year that we've been doing this is that we really do have a love for each other. There's a collaboration in our community that you I feel like you don't see in other communities. We really do care about each other and we want each other to succeed totally. in what we're doing. Even if the services or the performances or the talents overlap, we want to see each other do well, and yeah. that's such a blessing. I think that we have in our community. I do think that Orlando and Central, the greater Central Florida area understands that partnerships and collaborations are key to our success in the nonprofit sector. So you you do see a lot of of organizations reaching across kind of those boundaries and aisles and and really linking arms and helping each other out. I see that all the time. We work with so many great organizations in a variety of ways um, and they're everybody's always open to it you know always. people don't want to stay in their silos <laughs> you know they don't and I, f I feel like that that is part of the wonderful the wonderful collaboration spirit that we create when we're involved in things like when you get named as uh, 50 most beautiful people of uh, people magazine or whatever it is that you have been <laughs> named on well I, you know I was named on the on the Fa Orlando Family Magazine as part of the 2018 Men of the Year. See? But now people think, I just spoke last week and somebody introduced me as the Man of the Year. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm part of a very big list for right, Orlando Family Magazine. Right, but it's such an honor. <laughs> but how awesome. You know why I love those lists? It's because people, the general populace, likes lists. Yeah. And so when you create a list like that, you're reaching people who normally wouldn't know, so they're gonna take the time to see who the top 50 or top 40 or top 20 are. So yeah. there's such a great marketing there, but it's also a, a very um, charitable type of marketing. All right, so we're gonna share all of Joshua's contact information, how you can get involved in CFC Arts, how you can see what's coming up on their calendar um, when we share the show after this, but give them some parting words of wisdom. 
um, so that they can go forth and do good on this. Are we already day. done? Can you believe it's 27 minutes? It goes I, by so fast. I can't right? believe it. I know. Well, uh, thanks for tuning in. Ted, thanks for all the support that you do to get the word out about so many great leaders and organizations. And you can check out Central Florida Community Arts at cfcarts.com. You can come and be a part of one of our performing groups. You can come see one of our shows. Or there's somebody in your life that needs the art, so get them connected to us. Agreed. And so Gert and Jimmy Bowden. <laughs> Hi, Tracy Bowden. Smith. We love, I love Tracy Smith. Yeah. So Gert and Jimmy, look, he said we could come on. We could sing our own version of Don't Stop Believing." That's not what he said, but that's everybody what I, can that's sing what I heard. Every, everybody can everybody sing. Everybody can sing. All right, you've been a joy, my friend. Oh, thank you thank so you. much. He's awesome. Let's say some prayers for him as he goes into surgery in a little bit. Yeah. Um, so we love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to tune you out in a minute and say goodbye to my Up Live family who have been very patient over here. But thanks. Please get involved. CFCArts.com. Joshua Vickery. All right. Thanks, we love Ted. you guys.